Don't screw it up. Don't screw it up. Water, fire, earth, fire, fire air. But when, when the world needed him most, he vanished. vanished. Hundred years passed, and my brother and I discovered the new era. That, that, that. that. So at the end of the last episode, the Fire Nation was amassing their navy to attack the Water Tribe in their ice fortress on the water. You've advanced more quickly than any student I've ever trained. You have proven that with fierce determination, passion, and hard work, you can accomplish anything. Raw talent alone is not enough. You can hang. You must have already mastered waterbending. The last time we saw any kind of comparison between the two, Katara was hopelessly outmatched to Aang, who's just a natural at everything bending, which is expected because he's the Avatar, right? This is wrong. I'm engaged. I know what you need. Yep. Yeah. Sokka's getting slick. Look at him. I can't believe you do this every day. On a magic carpet ride. Yeah, it's beautiful up here. Yeah. Not as beautiful as you. What's happening? What is it, Ash? It's the Fire Nation. Centuries from now, people will study the great Admiral Zhao. This will be nothing like your legendary failure at Ba Sing Se. I hope not. I'm really curious to see where Uncle Iroh's story goes. As wonderful a character as he is, he obviously also has some unresolved things. I'm guessing he has his own arc that's gonna come into play. I can't see you anymore. Not at all. What? Oh, come on. But I like you too much. And it's too confusing <laughs> to be around you. I'm marrying someone else. Maybe he'll die in the invasion. I'm going to need volunteers for a dangerous mission. Count me in. Be warned. Wow. Mark of the Brave. See, they're all brave. I wasn't there when the Fire Nation attacked my people. I'm going to make a difference this time. Here we go. <laughs> Damn. Remember when I said this was a kid's show? War. Wow, I'm just going right out there by himself. Nice. That was beyond powerful. That was like pretty clever. Oh, man, he's clutch. He's like the most clutch animal of any show. Yeah, that's kind of what I would expect. How are you gonna beat the water tribe in their home turf? Oh, okay. That's how. Sokka, I want you to tell everything you know to Han. Han, show Sokka your respect. I expect nothing Ouch. less from my future son-in-law. Oh no. <laughs> Princess Yue's marrying you? The waterbenders draw their power from the moon, and I am working on a solution. I wonder if the fact that he showed restraint had anything to do with the fact that he lost to Aang. And Aang kind of taught him a lesson about being too aggressive and being too rash. Just a thought I had. I don't know if there's any actual connection. Ever since I lost my son. You don't have to say it. I think of you as my own. Let me tell you, Soka. I've courted a lot of Soka. girls, but Yue is the finest. So this is something I actually don't like. Whenever there's like a love triangle thing going, especially if it's two guys and a girl, I've noticed almost universally, the third guy or the original guy will just be a total jerk. It's not so bad, but it does feel a little bit convenient. This guy just seems like a jerk. And Sokka's obviously guy that we like and also that the girl likes so it's kind of like uh you're just a jerk without a soul no. that's what i said the legends say the moon was the first waterbender our ancestors saw how it pushed and pulled the tides and learned how to do it themselves that's some really cool folklore lore you yeah you know what's weird in this show is that all their names are vaguely chinese korean japanese you you a maybe like you that's like month or moon in Chinese, but I'm never sure because it's always seems like it's kind of the thing, but not actually the thing. Can you fire underwater? Nice. Yin Yang. Yeah. Is he okay? Aren't you a big girl now? No. Yes. Oops. Bad timing. Oh, Darmer Zuko, nice. It's nice that they set up the fact that she's been training and that she advanced really quickly. I think we kind of needed that to make this fight something that makes sense because Zuko has been established previously as someone who's pretty strong. Not as good as Aang, but like not too far off. And the last time we saw Aang and Katara match up, Katara was way, way, way below him. So we kind of needed that training information to make this legitimate, I think. See, you've learned a new trick. This is cool. Let's see what happens. I didn't come this far to lose to you. Just 
looks like a water, what a water style would be. Damn, look at that, that focus. You found a master, haven't you? Yeah. It's awesome. The ice thing is so key for water. Let me just say, I feel like not enough shows do this. It's great to see writers give in to the fun side of it, the pulp side of it, the kind of fantasy matchup. Like, who would win in a battle? This waterbender that you've grown attached to or this firebender that you've grown attached to? And who maybe have romantic interest? That's, that was my prediction from the fortune teller thing. I enjoyed that immensely. Oh, it's not over. That's good. We got more. You rise with the moon. I rise with the sun. I feel like that moment was one of the things you see a lot where it's like, we want this person to win, but actually we need this person to win for the plot, you know? So like, Katara won that fight, but still Zuko got his way, because I guess they just wanted him to be able to take Aang. You see that a lot in video games. You beat a boss, but then the boss beats you, just because it's not time for the game to end. It's just funny to see that. Meanwhile, the water tribe can try to resist the inevitable. I feel like they have another plan that we're not seeing, maybe? I can't imagine what that must feel like. You've been on a wild goose chase for the Avatar for how long? And it's your key to not being exiled anymore. And also the key to daddy's heart, <laughs> which you want so badly. And it's literally in your hands what that must feel like. I wonder if there's any conflict in that. I do feel like sometimes when you, you're going down that road when you're just hyper-focused on something to the point where you're obsessed, sometimes getting it doesn't give you the satisfaction you wanted. Sometimes it reveals to you the lie that was behind your infatuation. Sometimes we get infatuated with things to trick ourselves into avoiding other things that are painful to look at. Like if I only was rich, you know? And then you get rich and you're like, I have all the same problems I had before. I'm very curious to see where this will go. How Zuko will handle this. If he even manages to hang on to Aang, which is unlikely, honestly. Oh, okay. Well, that's the end of that episode. Yeah, it's a two-parter. I mean, I feel like I can't not do the other one right now. This is the season finale. Wow, exciting. Very nice. Very calming. Roku. The ocean and the moon. They crossed over from the spirit world. There is only one hmm. spirit I know of was old enough to remember the face dealer you must be very careful to show no emotion at all oh the face Not the dealer. slightest expression it's actually really hard at first i'm like okay whatever that's nothing there are so many involuntary muscles in your face it's tough i finally have you when i can't get you home because of this blizzard there's always something i've always had to struggle and fight and that's made me strong it's made me who i am mm. it's interesting that he's conscious of that and identifies with that. One thing I think we talked about in the past in the show is how your strengths can become your weaknesses. And that was in reference to Sokka just being very analytical and sometimes being too analytical and being kind of annoying. I think also your, your weaknesses can become your strengths if you're conscious of them. If you realize that there's something that continuously holds you back, once you realize that and start taking actions towards it, sometimes that weakness turns into your greatest strength. I think there's something about speaking things consciously that brings your attention to it in ways where you can take meaningful action on it and actually start to improve it. And once you do that, you're not an automaton, you're a thinking, acting human being. That's when you can start to actually do great things in any particular area. However, of course, it goes both ways and things can come full circle. And you can identify too strongly with that strength and then it becomes a weakness again. So for Zuko, he obviously has found some utility out of his struggles. He's gathered all these things that were painful for him and he's channeled it into like power, energy. But he's also stuck there as this black sheep, someone who feels like a castaway. I can only rely on myself. I'm strong because of adversity. I think the next step for him would be to be grateful for where that got him, but then take it to the next step and let it go a little bit and see what else is out there. He's a good kid who did what he needed to do to survive. The risk is, can he get over that and onto the next thing in his life? And I think that's something that everybody can relate to. I mean, some people are just flatlined, they never move at all. But for people who are trying to find the sweet spot of how to live, there tends to be kind of a cyclical element to it, or maybe a, a pendulum is a better analogy, because you, you go back and forth between two extremes, trying to find that perfect spot where you, you're in balance. I think it's very important to engage in that struggle but the first step is to be conscious that it exists and to be conscious of yourself and where you came from and who you are this reminds me of game of thrones i know game of thrones was after this way after this but it reminds me of the wall i intend to remove the moon as a factor how admiral joy another parallel with dragon ball although it's not going to be the same thing they're not going to blow it up they're just going to cover it with smoke or something as i was saying 
That's Years it? Ago, that was your best shot? If you blink, you miss it. Admiral Choi! Admiral <laughs> Choi. <laughs> Oops. Well, I guess you is free now. For marriage. The identity of the moon spirit's mortal form. I was a young oh, lieutenant. That's way more sinister than I thought. I thought it was gonna be, like, clouds. But he's gonna kill the moon spirit. I've heard rumors about your journey into the spirit world. What is Uncle Iroh? Like, he just can do everything. He's been everywhere. You're just a curly tail blue nose. Oh, <gasps> crap. Scared me. Welcome, my old friend, the Avatar. <laughs> You've come to me with a Ugh. new face. I definitely would have lost my face. I need to find the moon and the ocean. Their spirit names are Twee and La. Push and pull. We've already met them, actually. I've already met them. Tweet and La. Push and pull. I don't want to have Bomi part two. Pull sounds like something water related. Push fire related? Yue? Yue? They balance each other. Yin and Yang. Oh, it's the fish. We'll meet again. He looks so disappointed. Yes. Yes. This is so good. Hell yeah. Nice. I'm glad that they delivered on that master thing. He's still a jerk, but he just gained a lot of points. Moments like that put your character into perspective. If you can handle things and do what people need you to do, it's easy to forgive minor character flaws. That's something important that I feel like I never heard growing up. People tell you to be good, they tell you to be kind. One of the best ways to get ahead in life, I feel, the older I get, is just be good at things. Step up and do things well. It's so rare. If you can do that, they'll overlook your character flaws. So that guy, I really didn't like him last episode. I just saw him beat the crap out of the Fire Nation troops. And now I'm like, yeah, he's the man. Welcome back. Yeah. I'm not really sure what Zuko was expecting. Here for a rematch? Trust me, Zuko. It's not gonna be much of a match. Wow, so we get another fight. Oh, she wasn't lying. It wasn't much of a fight. Wait, we can't just leave him here. Sure we Good. can. Good. No, Take him. If we leave him, he'll die. That was really cool. I like that shot a lot. Yeah, you can't do much better than that in terms of conceiving a shot. So that just okay? weakened the water. I feel faint. Tribe, I yeah. feel it too. I owe the moon spirit my life. That's cool. why my mother named me Yue. For the moon. Right, it does mean moon. The Fire Nation will for generations tell stories about the great Zhao who darkened the moon. Don't people want the moon? Like, wouldn't people be pissed about that? I guess all glory to the Fire Fire Nation. Destroying the moon won't hurt just the Water Tribe. You have yeah. no idea what kind of chaos that would unleash on the world. He is right, Zhao. Whatever you do to that spirit, I'll unleash on you tenfold. Let Ooh. it go now. It's so much more powerful when someone who's cool and calm unleashes anger. That anger was like the perfect anger. Does that make sense? And it didn't feel out of control. It felt like righteous anger. And it wasn't an accident. It's a result of Uncle Iroh cultivating himself and cultivating his personality and selectively unleashing it when the time is right. And you're like, oh man, he's not messing around. And Zhao didn't and Zhao thought about that for approximately half a second. I'm putting it back. But is there going to be a trick? Let's see. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah, you better run. Damn, did not expect that. Wow. So just to be clear, this is him working together with the water spirit, right? You're alive? You tried to have me killed! Ugh! There's so much happening. Holy yes, crap. I did. Let's see if Jaw got any stronger since their last fight. I had no choice. You have been touched by the moon spirit. It gave me life. Maybe I can give it back. Uh oh. You don't have to do that. You kind of do. My duty, Sokka. Yeah. No! Sokka just can't catch a break, poor guy. 
Oh wow, she's the Goodbye, Sokka. moon goddess. I'll always be with you. I'm surprised by that. Good, then die. Man, Zuko's just too good. He can't help himself. Even Zhao he tried to save. It's time we helped rebuild our sister tribe. What about Aang? Nice. He still needs to That's learn water bending. Then he better get used to calling you Master Katara. Wow. So she passed Aang. That's impressive. Awesome. Wow, that was an incredibly strong end to the season. Zuko finally getting what he wanted just for a moment. You have Katara versus Zuko, which is pretty cool. You have Katara rising in level, like past Aang, which is interesting. You got the crazy battle. Cole the face stealer, which is really beautifully designed. The moon thing was awesome. You have Zhao, who seems to have died, but probably not. And you have a new character at the end, Zuko's sister. I'm very excited to see what's in store for season two. So yeah, we'll continue this soon. I just want to take a minute before this video ends to thank you guys for watching and for commenting and for liking the videos and, uh, and for being so cool and supportive. It's been a lot of fun and it's been fun thanks to you guys. So yeah, I look forward to season two and I hope to see you there.